This is the story of Arthur Henry Myers and Mae Shickley Myers and their family. My name is Richard Peters, their oldest grandson. These are my recollections. Others may have different remembrances. in the Myers family for 135 years. The Myers has lived here for four generations. This is the Mountjoy Mills that stood at 125 Mountjoy Street in Mountjoy, Pennsylvania. The company manufactured and bordered scarves, tablecloths, and pillowcases. May Shickley lived about a block away and at age 13 in 1910 she began working here. In the process she met a young man named Art Myers. May's daughter, Millie, my mom, liked to record May talking about the past. The following is a recording about her time working there. I got $3 a week. $3 a week. What did Daddy get for running a machine? Ten. $10 a week. Yeah. $20. And how were you paid? You got big dollars. Silver dollars. Yeah. So they can run over to the bank.
Art received a inheritance from Mike and Melinda Myers' estate, his grandparents. With that, he paid off his mother and stepfather's house. Briefly, Art worked at what we called the cotton mill. While there, his index finger was caught in a machine and was amputated. When the First World War was announced, Art's buddies joined the army and Art tried to do the same, but was denied because of the lack of an index finger or trigger finger. May's mother lived with Art and May for the last 10 years of her life. She died in their home on April 19, 1929. The Depression hit on October 24th, 1929. Art and May had six children at home and May was expecting her seventh, Jean. When work wasn't available, Art was willing to take most anything to earn money. He also planted a large garden. The haircuts were done by Art as well, both boys and girls. May could make almost anything on the old Singer sewing machine. She also could stretch a dollar. The family was active in the Mount Joy Church of God. May taught Sunday school and Art led the Sunday school orchestra. The Myers kids loved to go to the movies, and it was really great that their Uncle Will and his son George managed the Marietta Theater. Next door was a soda fountain, which Aunt Clara managed. Their son George was a pioneer in selling radios and also repair. He also later did the same thing with TVs. Art's mom, just like May's mother, died in Art and May's home on February 14, 
On June 14, 1937, Dick graduated from Finley College. The Mountjoy community thought highly of Dick and came together and transportation was arranged for the whole family to go to Finley, Ohio for the graduation. During the fall of 1939, the family moved to the station house, which had been the old train station. It was located on North Market Street, which was right across from what, what is now the uh, Central Hotel, or Boobies Brewery. <music> Upon graduating from high school, Jim was given a scholarship to Findlay College for $50. Today it would be worth just a little less than $1,000. He also had $11 from different sources, and today it would be worth $234.88. He hitchhiked the 500 miles to Findlay College. Didn't know if he could stay, but after four years he was able to graduate. In the spring of 1941, May was 46 and had major physical problems. She had surgery and was in the hospital for quite a while. It took her months to recuperate and needed treatment the rest of her life. Millie was permitted to leave school early so she could go home to prepare supper for the family. One evening, Millie was visiting with friends over at the Joy Theater when Art was checking on her and came over and demanded that she go home. Millie and her dad arrived home. A few minutes later, Millie went out the back door and went right back over to her friends. Early spring of 1942, the family was given notice that they would have to move. 
the old station house was sold to the Psycho Petroleum Company. 37 West Donegal Street was available. The railroad owned it and it was a rental property for the last 50 years. Grandpa managed the airplane spotter's shed. It stood on the cemetery hill above Mount Joy and was manned 24 hours a day. All airplanes were spotted and reported. Whitey served in the Navy and spent most of his time on the USS Hodge in the Pacific. On July 28, 1945, it was hit by a kamikaze plane. Whitey was not injured. Mel Peters served in the Army. He spent time in California on maneuvers, and then jungle training in Hawaii, and finally went to Okinawa. He witnessed a lot of carnage and had bad dreams from his experience for many years to come. He served as an MP in Korea for his final weeks in the Army.
About 1948, the Myerses were notified by the railroad that their home was going to be sold. This was another dilemma since they only lived there a few years. Uncle Dick came to the rescue and loaned them the money for the down payment. The old house needed a lot of repair. Grandma took the bus to Lancaster and was able to go to the Army surplus and buy paint. In this picture, you see my dad, Mel Peters, up on the roof painting. My brother Jimmy wanted to help and suddenly dad turned around and there he was up on the roof with him. He was only a toddler. Bill and Aunt Betts were the first ones to get a TV. Every Friday night the family would gather at the Botman house. They watched wrestling. Grandma was the one that got into it the most. Aunt Betts made lots of popcorn for us. Grandma and Grandpa were a lot of fun. On Christmas Eve, it was tradition that after the Botman kids were in bed, Grandpa would take the old family sleigh bells and run around the perimeter of the Botman house.
The Mountjoy Mills closed in the early 1950s, and Art and a friend got a job in Anvil, which required them to drive 30 minutes each way. Grandpa also worked a lot of overtime. At age 65, he had a massive heart attack and never was able to go back to work again.